Welcome back, everybody, uh, to my vlog. It's Wednesday, the 15th of June. You believe that we're almost to the longest day of the year. It's about to happen. Today, we're going to be talking about American uh, bail bonds, and we're going to be talking about, uh, well, we're going to be showing you some photos, pictures that I just acquired from an anonymous source, let's say, of some people that, oh, let's just say you've never seen some of these folks. And I got pictures to show you and some pictures of Frank Collada that we've never seen before. And uh, some pictures of Pete Basil. How about the guys who broke into Tony Accardo's house and then ended up dead? Oh my gosh. I hope that you guys are ready for a hell of a day because that's what we're gonna have today. I don't care what you think. We're gonna have some fun. Welcome back, it's my vlog. Red, we met. How are you doing today? I'm doing fine. It's a little hot here, like every place else, but I'm doing fine. Well, good to hear, man. It's glad to have you around here today. Thanks for coming back, and thanks to everybody for coming into the room today. I see the comments are pouring in. Don Ciccio, Deep Port Zalo, to William Kirchmeier, Greg Polly, who just joined the channel. Uh, Oh, thanks a lot, Greg, by the way. I uh, really appreciate your support. Sean Pender, Jim Magnifici, Frank Ferraro, Southside, uh, Catherine Guerrero, James, Anthony, Martini, Holman Sanders. You guys are all here. Oh, why that? Why, why that 68? Hotter than balls in Louisville. <laughs> I hear that. <laughs> Super hot, right? That's what I'm, I'm talking about. So I got a haircut. It's 95 in Chicago today. I got, I got a haircut. <laughs> I got oh, it's got a haircut. Yeah, I was sitting there at the barber shop, and he's cutting my hair, and he's going at it, you know. And I don't know if it was his niece. I don't know if it was who the little girl was. Little girl was sitting there in the bar, and she's sitting there, and she's munching on this cookie. And as the barber was snipping away, she started walking around by him, and he looked down at her, and he said, "You know," he said, "You better watch out." He says, "You're going to end up getting some hair on your cookie." And she said, yeah, she said, I'm getting big boobies, too. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. So we have a lot to talk about today. American bail bonds is going to be discussed. And uh, that's where American bonding. I'm sorry, American bonding. So we got bail bonds in the in the thumbnail. And that's what. Yeah. So American bonding. That's what Red's here for. He's here to correct me and make sure that I get nothing wrong. I don't want to be spouting <laughs> bullshit. You know what I mean? You have to know what you're. <laughs> it's 97 in Pennsylvania. Leanne rolling along. I hope you're in your uh, I hope you're in your cab there with the AC on. Matt God. Six in, in, in uh, Southern Illinois. It's crazy, right? Did it's I lose a bet? Country. No, I got a haircut. Come on, guys. Get off me about this. I got mine cut, too. <laughs> get a little trimmed up. Short. Yeah, you did. Yeah. I'm surprised Red still has hair up there. <laughs> hey, I told you guys we have some unseen photos to uh, to show you guys today. Of some, some uh, you know, uh, we got uh, Frank Collada, L Leo Gardino, young Leo Gardino, Harry Ailman, Joe DeFranzo, John Mandel, Pete Bays. We're gonna, I'm going to show you some really cool pictures. Steve Garcia, Butch Petroselli. Uh, never seen before, guys. This stuff came from an anonymous source. And so stick around. We're going to be showing it to you. But you know what I got a, I got a picture of? I got a picture of Red. <laughs> I got a picture of Red with Matt. What, a young, young Red with Matt. Dri were you driving a car in this picture? My old MGB, my MG Midget. It was uh, 1970. Diane uh, Hanson gave it to me. Kurt Hanson. Diane. And Kurt Hanson. And I've been getting relative. Uh, she's gonna. I think she's coming on next week. 
we're having her on next week. Kurt Hansen's wife is going to come on the show and talk about knowing Tony Spilatro. Of course, talk about Kurt Hansen. And she's going to talk about Red. I hope she doesn't talk any shit about you, Red. I hope so, too. <laughs> She came up with a photo. You'll, you're going to see Diane in the picture. It's her. Uh, it's her. It's part of her. <laughs> it's part of her. You're going to see part of her. Okay. The the lady in the black on the left side of the picture. Here's Red. Look at this picture. <laughs> see the with the chains right there. Whoops. Right over here with the chains. That's Diane, and then that's Red <laughs> with hair. See, yeah. that's him with hair. Yes. Curly red hair. <laughs> Does it look like red to you guys? Look at close up. It looks like red, doesn't it? It's red, except young. Very young. <laughs> oh, I was 21 man. then. John Calgiros. I thought this was a family show. Yeah, John, you, you were definitely mistaken when you thought that. <laughs> This is a this is a show. If you've never tuned in, this is a show about the Chicago outfit. We talk about Chicago outfit history. We talk about Vegas mob history, and we talk about um, well, us sometimes. You know, every once in a while, and you guys, of course, we are constantly talking to. How'd you get in touch with her? Scott, Scott H wants to know with Diane. Uh, she sent me a message. She, she evidently she was watching TV. And she saw us on TV, my vlog. She was watching my vlog and saw it's unbelievable, man. It gets out there and people are, you know, they're tuning in well, and listening to a to video it. that I did about Kurt, you know, Kurt Hansen. And right. she said, Oh my goodness. And so she got her granddaughter. She really doesn't operate any devices, but she got his, her granddaughter to send me a message. It's on one of the videos in the back list, you know, that we did last week or the week before. And she said, I'd like to get in touch with you. And her granddaughter found my number and she got a hold of me and we've been talking ever since. That's crazy. And you're spending hours talking to her too, catching up. She she knew um and who, I was in American Bonding when she was there. When I first got there, right. she was there. And although we never saw each other at American Bonding, I saw her with Kurt or Weiner. And other people, Joey Constantino, and she knew all these people, and she knew them on a social side. So she saw she didn't see the real mean bad parts of these people. She's another person that just saw who they were. She never looked at them as murderers or killers or anything like that. Got you. So, um, so she says. <laughs> Scott H said, "Yeah, it's a family show. It's, it's in the Adams family. It's about that strange." Maybe a little stranger. You never know. Hit the like button, guys, if you guys are just coming in. Julie M., this is an awesome show. Glad to hear from you. Never heard your name before. Don Ciccio Di Porzalo is here. And uh, Big Boy Blue, he was what they called a smut peddler. Me. Talking about you, Red? Yeah. Oh. Yeah, Red was a smut peddler. That's oh, what yeah. He peddled smut. William Kirchmeyer. I like smut. Something's wrong with smut. <laughs> uh, were you romantic at one time with this Diane? No, no. no. Okay. Tom She's Cody. about eight years, but very close, friendly. I mean, we really got along well, very well. She always said I looked like a college kid when we talk on the phone. Oh. So. Um, uh, uh, yeah, why that 68 said hey, you look like Donnie most from happy days. Okay. <laughs> Frank Ferraro said you look like a Kennedy. <laughs> a lot of people have told me I look like a Kennedy because of my nose. But Cindy said you got the same, same smile on red. That's right. Yeah. There it is. Same smile. on red. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Stick around. Cause we're going to show you, Hey, you guys want to see this quick before we get into this, uh, uh, bail bond place and, and what it did and what they was it called american bondage was that the nickname <laughs> no american bonding <laughs> here we go <laughs> here we go thank you why that 68 american bondage i don't i don't know again family show right so <laughs> don't worry we're gonna get to john wayne gacy by the end of the show i mean i get into him but we're gonna talk about him because i found out something crazy 
and uh, yeah. we're gonna we gotta talk about it. And I watched just watch that, and it, we'll, we'll get into that later. So, um, uh, this is the Adam and Red's family, correct? So, <laughs> anyways, Red, do you know about Judith Exner who had an affair with JFK and Mimi Garcia? Paul Swilly, we're gonna we're gonna save that question for later because we want to talk about uh, American bondage, and I mean. Bondage. <laughs> When you owe the bail bond money, because that's what happens, you borrow money from the bail bond, right? So that yeah. means you're kind of, you're kind of, you know, to the to the bail bond company. You well, know, you got a premium that you got to pay, ten percent, right? So if yeah. the bond's twenty grand, it's two thousand dollars. You owe the two thousand dollars to the bonding company. And, you have to and what used to happen in American bonding was people that didn't have that much cash in their pocket, they bond them out anyway. And the two thousand, they put on juice. Okay, so they would have to. They would ten percent a week. Pay me back. Uh huh. So that encourages you to go out and steal more. <laughs> so how did this Diane? How did she end up there at the buy? Because you said Tony Spilatro, uh, Joey Lombardo, Milwaukee Phil. They all had offices there at the buy yes. company. They did. Yes. What did they do in their offices? I don't really know. I never went into one of their offices. I stayed in the common area. When they did, they shut the door. When they, whenever they went in there to talk about something, they shut the door. It was private. But um, uh, that's why they took the people in there that didn't pay. That's what they, they took them in no, the office. They didn't do that there. They made talked about what they made arrangements, but they didn't do it there. Don Chichio, he said, only if you didn't pay, then came the bondage. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and the torture. <laughs> yeah, that's when you lost your fingernails and your toenails. I don't think they did that. <laughs> they couldn't go out and steal anymore. They Doing couldn't the make money. Uh, William Kirchmayer, Bill, never needed a bail bondsman. Never been caught, see? <laughs> now, when anyway, you get caught. I met, I met uh, Kurt Hansen was a bail bondsman, and he was in American bonding. And when I first met him, before he lost his license, he was an American bonding, making bonds. He was a bail bondsman. And so um, he was married to Diane, and they had to renew their vows. Uh, they were married to the chapel in Vegas, but they had to renew their vows. And I met her before then, and I met her after then. But she was involved with uh, Irv Weiner put her in, uh, or put Kurt in Weenie World, those we weenie wagons that I talked about earlier. Right. Mm -hmm. And she used to operate a couple of them. And she'd be out there all day, hardworking gal. She was a waitress. Uh, she's had quite a career. She owned her own club out. We'll talk about her when she gets on. Okay. But, but that's she, how I met, that's she, how she was I, married to Irv Weiner. Pardon? She was married to Irv Weiner? No, no. Irv Weiner. Irv Weiner was kind of the head of American bonding. Oh, he owned a Weiner Wagons. They owned a company. They had a skim from Las Vegas. And they Chances made that Irv they made Weiner it. would own a Weiner wagon. You know, <laughs> you'd be like, come on. How about that? How about Weiner's Weiner's? <laughs> Weiner's Weiner's. <laughs> Is that be the good name for it? Yeah. He didn't think so. <laughs> no sense of humor with these guys. Come on. Some of them did. Some didn't. Kurt had a sense of humor. Uh, we, were walking, we were walking down uh, my uh, in Old Town, and we were looking at the uh, the store. And because it was set back off the street, he said, "You know what we're going to call this? Peepers Alley, instead of Piper's Alley. Peepers, Peepers Alley. Alley." And then we named it the Peeping Tom. That's a great name. I'm telling you, Winers Wieners. It would have worked. It worked anyway, but it's a, it's quite a story. So so was it a front, uh, the bonding company? Yes, yes. Although they did business there and made money there, it was still a gathering point for everybody to do whatever they had to do. There was a restaurant next door. There was another restaurant on the other side. There was a Greek restaurant on one side, and Mr. Patch was on the other side. We used to cut through that to go to 11th State which was police headquarters at the time. Everybody locked up there. So uh, easy to get people out. So so it was a real bonding company, right? It just happened oh, yeah. that everybody was corrupt. 
I mean, but they did do real. It was a real bonding company. But oh it was yeah, a, even later on in, in the years, uh, Millie, who was the uh, secretary there, the head secretary, she had gotten a subpoena to go before a grand jury about uh, the skim and some other things, and she called me. Um, I called her. I needed a bond. Uh, I was taking off some fire escapes and, that overhead uh, the Chicago sidewalk overhanged, and uh, I needed a bond. So I called her and, you know, wrote, they wrote the bond for me and she brought it out and she, she talked to me when she brought the bond out. So then I, the city was insured. So I wouldn't kill anybody when, when we took down this fire escape. Um, it overhung who, the sidewalk. Who, who's Tommy Peppers? Don't know. Ryan Brown said he hopes Tommy Peppers stays away. I don't know who Tommy Peppers is. Hey, John McShane, somebody else told me this about Frank. That on Valuetainment, another YouTube channel, uh, that uh, Patrick Bet David said that he talked about how out of all the gangsters and mobsters that he interviewed, that Frank Collada was the most intimidating. He said that blood ran cold, man, when he walked in the room. Something like that is what he said. Anybody knows where that clip is or which episode it's in? Please put a link in the comments if you if you do, because. I'd like to see the club. I think everybody else would too. I and I'll pull it and, and show it to you guys if it does. But he said out of all of them that he thought Frank was the coldest man. So real deal. So Don Chichio Di Porzalo did Red No Two Bondsman named Guido. <sighs> no. Fidanzi by Danzi. Fidanzi. Fidanzi. No. And Dan they weren't an American bonding. No Danzi. They weren't American bonding. I knew all the bondsmen there. All right. Do you drink White Claws? Big Boy no. Blue wants to know. I, you know what? I think I know what that is, White Claws. Isn't that that clam juice in beer or something that they I'm, – I'm just not – I don't Squirt. know. I know. I probably have that all all wrong. But Irv Wiener. Yes, that's what I said, Irv Wiener. But then <laughs> I said it's Irv Weiner. So that's <laughs> – uh, Bail bonding, is it legal in Illinois? Uh, uh, is it now illegal in Illinois? Bail bonding is now illegal in Illinois, John O said, right? Well, on, on the state end, uh, they have your state bonds. And what oh, they do... Fee on the sorry, Fee Danzi. Fee Danzi. That's how you say it. Fee Danzi. I'm sorry. You don't know Fee Danzi, though? No. Okay. Uh, on the state end, the state makes the bonds. On the federal end, you got to come up with a federal bond. So they took the heavy stuff like interstate, you know, bonds like that. Mm -hmm. But they make a phone call. Joey Casatino pick up the phone, call across the street, and say, "Yeah, you got so so over there. Bring them down." Wow. I mean, Keith Helton, uh, Peppers insulted Red on a previous show. He did on a previous show. I, I don't know. I must have missed it. Uh, TC, there are no bail bondsmen in Illinois. Really? That's what that's what he said. No bail bondsmen in Illinois. Uh, Illinois has a mostly 10% cash applies bond system for decades. Yeah, that's for the state. It's for a state charge. If it's a federal charge, there's bonds. I'm going to look it up right now while I'm yeah, talking to you. I, I, yeah, I mean, I have no... See, I've never needed to be bonded out of jail, so I don't know anything about it. It's an alternate to beer for women like Zima. Oh, okay. So white white cloth seltzer tastes like flat seven up. Yeah. No, I don't drink any of that. Do you? I don't Zima. My God. Okay. Yeah. In uh, Chicago, what? Indiana, there's a uh, Brothers Bail Bonds, uh Suburban uh, Motor Club, Oak Brook, Illinois, they have bail bonds. Rogers, bail bonds. There's bail bonds. Lot of them. Lot yeah. Of them. yeah. So, Does TC. Chicago have bail bonds. Good question. He's talking about state charges. He's clarifying. He's talking about state charges. Chicago does not have bail bonds. Instead, the offenders can pay the bail directly to the court. Okay. That's if it's a state charge. If it's a well, federal charge, you're going to need something else. A white closet for college kids practicing drinking. Yeah, we're talking Don Chichio Di Porzal. We're talking back in the 60s and 70s. Bail bonds. Kind of dated. 
So it's yeah, we're <laughs> talking. Did the bail bondsmen legally carry guns? Dog, yes. The dog hunter carried a stun gun, but they they, they carried they, guns back yeah. in the day. They carried uh, guns, blackjacks, anything. They had to do to subdue somebody, right? And when they went out to get somebody, it was worse than dog to bounty hunter. I'll tell you that much. Man, I wouldn't want to wouldn't want to be that. Rick Charles, you, you, you pay Beetlejuice under the table. <laughs> All right, off, outfit boss, where's the picks? All right, here we go. Where's the beef? <laughs> <laughs> Let's okay. not get to that debacle again, all right? <laughs> that was Arby's. No, it was Wendy's. No, it was Arby's. It was Wendy's. No, not, not happening. All right, so <laughs> where's the picks? I'm going to show you guys a pick. Check this out. Never seen before. Never seen before. I'm going to show you. So if you're driving, pull over to the side, look at your phone, look at the screen. This is Frank Collada, age 30. By the way, these pictures came from an anonymous source. And... Um, They've never been seen. So here we go. Frank Collada, age 30, mugshot. Take a look. That's April 11th, 1968. I don't know what the charges were, but that's Frank in the clink. About that same time, his partner, Leo Gardino, went into the uh, clink, got busted for something. This is a very young Leo Gardino. He was part of the Hole in the Wall gang out here in uh, Las Vegas. Take a look. Well, they didn't get busted for traffic tickets. I can guarantee you that. That's 615.75, right? No, 131, uh, August, January 31st, 75. Harry Ailman, you guys know Harry Ailman. Here we go. There's Harry Ailman, 1972. How about Joe DeFranzo? Now, was this John DeFranzo's brother? Right. Right? right? Okay. Right. Coming Joe DeFranzo, everybody. Here we go. Never before seen. There he is. <laughs> I think he's making a funny face. Like a... He's got like a disgust that he got busted. <laughs> well, don't these guys make funny faces so that their face doesn't look right? Like, like Joey Lombardo's picture, you know? You know, stuff like that. It, 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 they make funny faces. All right, I have a few more to show you. We'll show them to you a little bit later. Including the guys that robbed Tony Accardo's house. We have no photos of him anywhere, guys. But I got the pictures, of two of them. We were in on that robbery, ended up dead. And then I have a picture of Pete Basil. Remember the guy that Frank got in the fight with over the Persian rugs outside of the Upper Crust Pizzeria? And then Butch <laughs> Petroselli, I got a picture of him too. So I'm going to show these to you guys a little bit later. And uh, if you get a chance, if you get a chance um, to come to Vegas, the, uh, the Vegas Mob Tour is back up. And it is running, and we are. Um, it's it's a really good tour. Red, Red can attest to it. So can everybody else who took the tour. But now I've oh, added, yeah. I've added music beds to the background. I've done. Um, I'm, I've really been working on this thing and improving it and putting in improvements. So if you come to Vegas, be sure to do it and use the code Mob Vlog when you buy your tickets. Okay, and you will uh, you get twenty percent off. So good not discount, touchable experience. Discount. But if you just do the the mob tour, it's uh it's twenty percent off, and uh, it's rolling. It's a heck of a good tour to see, and we're building another tour, and we're getting really close to launching it, really close. And I'm going to tell you guys, it includes a story about John Wayne Gacy. Oh yeah, it is. It surprised me. I it, didn't believe it, it at first. It surprised me. It surprised me too. And we're doing. You wouldn't believe this. There were doctors and nurses in Las Vegas at Sunrise Hospital, okay, that supposedly, now the charges never came on this, okay, but there was a huge investigation that the angel of death, she was going around turning off people's oxygen machines in the ICU because the degenerate nurses and doctors, the degenerate gamblers had a Deadpool going at the hospital, betting on when the patients were going to die. And she wanted to make sure she was getting enough of that pot, you know, for her son. Anyway, it was never, it was, it was, the charges were dropped. I want to be clear about that. But the stuff I'm finding out about this town is just fascinating, fascinating, true crime. Uh, but the mob tour is a must do. Check it out. Join us for the Vegas mob tour. Experience Sin City's dark past. Learn how Bugsy Siegel built the flamingo. Find out who killed him and why. Hear who Jimmy Hoffa supplied money to back in the 50s. 
Visit the actual home used in the 1995 blockbuster movie, Casino, and other filming locations as well. See the real jewelry store where Frank Collada and his crew were busted. Sit in the exact spot where Frank Lefty Rosenthal's car was bombed back in 82. View never-before-seen footage of Frank Collada telling personal stories about Tony Spilatro, Joey the Clown Lombardo, and the Hole in the Wall gang. This is how serious we thought he's out. Sounds like a peach color. It was brown then. The only thing changed is the driveway. Let us make an offer you can't refuse. Upgrade to our Untouchables experience. Following the tour, you'll enjoy a three-course Italian dinner in the Tuscany Gardens. And then, VIP seating to the award-winning Rat Pack is Back show. Enjoy Vegas. It's the way it was meant to be. Okay, so Red, let's get into this. Um, I we're got talk out of Bruce about City here. Bruce City is let's, two. Yeah, yeah. Said, <laughs> gambling our lives in Las Vegas hospital that takes Sin City to another level of gaming. Let me let me tell you guys something. In 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 Sin City, uh, in Sin City, there is gambling everywhere. Every bar you go into, every grocery store you go into, uh, every gas station. station. They got every gas station. To every gas station. You can't get gas, groceries, even the CVS, the drugstore. There's gaming. Okay, there's gambling machines. So there is gambling damn near everywhere in this town. The only place there isn't is the library in the hospital. But if you go to the hospitals, you're gambling with your life. <laughs> <laughs> the big gambling. Vegas. Sorry, right? just wanna. This one, Adam will even take you to the devil's church. Hey, Rick Charlton, I found out that seeing eye on the church that um, I'm doing a little research into it really got piqued my curiosity. They do it a lot in Europe. They have the all seeing eye in the churches. Look it up online in the Catholic churches. I have no idea uh, why. I'm still trying to figure that out. Adam's Vegas mob tour. Bring your own gas can. <laughs> and you know what they call them in Canada, red gas cans? Petrol. No, they call them they call them cherry cans. A oh, cherry, cherry can, can, yeah. Cherry can or cherry bucket? Cherry can. Mike Gott, Matt Gott would know. But a, a, my wife said that to me, a cherry can the other day. I said, what cherry can? What the hell is a cherry can? You know, and she's like, you know, with the to fill the car. And I said, a gas can? <laughs> what are they thinking in Canada? Cherry can. All right, Eddie. So <laughs> Jerry can. Thank you. Yeah, Jerry can is another. No, no, no. It's a it's a jerry can. That's another name. But in Canada, see, Matt God's the same. Cherry can. Like the color of the cherry. I said to Ellie, what was it? Like the color of the cherry and then the black spouts the stem. Like it doesn't. No, guys, I'm telling you. I Matt, lived for a short time. I lived in London, cherry. Ontario, Canada. And their terms there are completely different. They're, they're crazy. Like Matt God to say, because it's red. Because it's the color of a cherry. Right. What the hell? But in, in the U.S., they call them jerry cans. And they call them jerry cans because they got them GI. during the World War in Germany. I don't know. A jerry can? G.I. 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 For a G.I., a jerry? Well, G.I. cans rode on the back of the vehicles, but the, uh, uh, jerry cans were kind of named after... Uh, uh, Hitler's uh, army, the German army. Got That's it. What they called them juries. Fuel cans and that were supplied to the superior to the Allies fuel containers. Ah, right. jerry can came from World War II. German fuel cans that were superior to the Allies. Right. Containers. All right. So there, there we go. Now we know where it came from. Cherry Thank you, Bill. <laughs> right. Let's get back to American bonding. So somehow we got a, <laughs> to gas cans. You know, I'll tell you what, though. Um, I did, Matt. I did ask my wife, and that's, she's the one who told me cherry can. She said the neighbor had a cherry can. I said, "What the hell's a cherry can?" Well, they had to be red to put gas in them, so they were bright red cherry. Okay, I'll go with it. I, I'm <laughs> red cans, just like today. If you have a gas can, it's red. You know. I could see a little cartoon strip with the lady standing by the, you know, side with the gas can in her hand and uh, 
a guy walking by saying, it's a nice cherry can you have, lady. <laughs> and her whack hitting him, you know, the cherry can. <laughs> her, never mind. Never mind, Red. I saw sure. a woman. Huh? Two irons says I'm, I'm not just a putter. Thank you. <laughs> Brad, you're more than just a putter. Yes, of course. You guys do a great job. I'm glad that you're enjo uh, enjoying this. Beats a hairy can, I suppose. Yeah, I suppose you're right, Anthony Martini. <laughs> sure would. I remember seeing a lady who was just sitting at the bar, and she had these tight red leather pants on. And I said to her, I said, hey, lady, I said, how do you get into those pants of yours? She said, well, you could start by buying me a drink. <laughs> 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 okay so so um so the bonding company let's get back to that tony mm -hmm. and joey the lombardo these guys had offices there and this diane the actual her. owner of the bonding company was joey Casentino. he owned the building and irv weiner he was kind of like the front man irv weiner was the powerhouse he was the real powerhouse he's the money man and uh Joey Lombardo was there. Um, Milwaukee Phil was there. It was kind of where everybody congregated until after they made the spot that we've talked about over by Jimmy Cozos. Okay. Kaylani, we want to give a thank you. Yeah. Ke Kaylani D. Bernardo said, not funny. LOL. And Ramson Rasho laughed so hard that five dollars fell out of his pocket. Thanks, Ron. Thank you. <laughs> Matt Gods, what was the Addy of the bonding company? The yeah. what? Advertisement. They have some kind of sl slogan or no, something. They just had a big sign up that said American Bonding. Every yeah. cop in the city knew what it was. If she said I work for American Bonding or my associate with American Bonding, he said, "Get out of here!" <laughs> you know. Uh, Turd Ferguson, the blue cherry cans, which I guess they aren't cherry cans if they're blue, but I guess those are for diesel. Yes, I thought that blue was for kerosene, and green was for diesel. They changed that now, but back in the day, I'm it just was that way. As we go, you know that, right? <laughs> All right, so I know that we had the diesel or the kerosene was in a different co colored container in, in the garage because we had a diesel uh, uh, burner. Now they got blue ones. They got blue ones. Kerosene, for, uh, kerosene heater. Yellow is diesel. All right, so let's get back to it. <laughs> what was the question here? Uh, who, who does? Rudd. What's the typical street tax you had to pay the mob? 10, 20 percent? Typical, I don't know. The, the way it worked when I was around was they would make a count with you on how much money you took in, and they'd actually watch you count your money. And if you weren't connected, you didn't ask for permission to open up there, they took 50 percent of it. They took half. In my case, we came to an agreement with Marshall Cofano for 50% after the first count, but we'd only been open two weeks. There was no, you know, not much money. So it was $500 a week. I paid him and he said, I don't care if you make a dollar or $10 million. I want my envelope for $500 a week. No problem. Later on, I was making, I don't know, 14, 15,000. So $500 to him per week was nothing, but he never raised it. He was a man of honor. He never raised it. All right. You guys are too much. I can't take this anymore. So let's get this right once and for all about these cherry cans, and then we're going to drop it. So a yellow one is for diesel. A cherry can is red. The blue can for the kerosene, that's a blueberry can. Okay. And the rainbow jerry cans, those are the ones for fruit juice. <laughs> Look at Red's face. <laughs> the rainbow kid. William Kirchmayer. The world is changing. I swear it. The world has changed. <laughs> too much. It's too much. What's the craziest thing that you ever saw at American Bonding? Matt Gouds wants to know. The what thing? The great the greatest thing? Craziest thing. Yeah. Um 
them fighting amongst each other, you know, verbally arguing amongst each other or losing a hand of cards or something like that. It got out of hand where they throw the whole deck or something like that. It got crazy. Uh, guys, hit the smash, please, please. Russ Jackson, yeah, you guys got to make jokes during Pride Week. What the hell's the matter with you? You know, seriously, hit the button if you guys like it. It's fun. Is this Pride Week? I don't know, Red. I don't celebrate it. So if it I is, I don't even know what it is. <laughs> so Red's got a poker face. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so um, that's that's pretty crazy. You guys want to see a couple more pictures? Yeah. Let's take a look at some more pictures. So I'm never before seen photographs here. Um, we got them from an anonymous source. Uh, and they're, um, they're mug shots of some guys that maybe you've never seen. I know I, I haven't seen some of these photos. So let's start with uh, Butch Petroselli, huh? Butch Petroselli, here he is. April 6th, 75. It looks like he read. Yo. <laughs> what he's doing, right? Come on. That's what he's doing. <laughs> he looks like he's getting ready to spit on somebody. <laughs> now, you guys remember the story about the guy out here in Vegas was on the hole in the wall gang for a little while and uh, ended up uh, uh blaming Frank for some Persian rugs, ended up getting to a fight with him in front of the Upper Crust Pizzeria. And Frank said, I think his exact words were, I reached up with my mouth and I bit him in the cheek. I remember David, that. David that Bowman told me his story. No, Frank Collada told that story. Now, yeah, David, David, David Bowman, Pete, I don't know. I don't David remember. David Bowman all. told that story. What, but I know that Frank and, and Pete got into a fist fight and they tripped over one of those parking curb, you know, in the parking lot. And he on the ground rolling around and Frank said, I reached up with my mouth and bit him in the cheek. So here he is. This is Pete Basil. That's what Pete looked like. He was about five foot six, I would say, according to that, uh, to that chart behind him. About five, six. Although he's with puffy hair there, you know, but going by his skull. Five six, about the same height as Frank, so that's Pete Basil for you. Now, um, <clears throat> two guys that were involved with the Tony Accardo uh, burglary, two guys. There was John Mandel and Steve Garcia. Both of these guys broke into Accardo, stole a bunch of jewelry. Correct, Red? Is that the story? Yes, right. They broke in. They stole the jewelry, and then Tony got back. He was on vacation, right, in Florida, Accardo. When he was on vacation, I think it was Florida. I don't know. No, he was on vacation. He, he was doing, he had a winter home in Palm Springs. And Jackie Cerrone called him up and said, your house was broke into. And this is a tape by Bill Romer. He said, I want them dead. I want them all dead. I want you to get every one of them. And he was livid. Okay, so. So Cerrone put the word out and it was done. Four guys. Right, four guys total. Okay, so yeah. here, here's here's John Mandel. This is one of the four that um, were unfortunate enough to break into Tony Accardo's house, and here he is. I don't think that I think there's a little writing on his face on the side of his neck. It looks like a tattoo, but it's not. I don't think that that was in fashion. I think that's a little writing that bled through the back of the picture. Maybe that was written on the back. His name. It looked like it, or yeah. it might have been folded at one time. June of seven, June seventh on the other side too. Yeah, it bled through. Um, and here's Steve Garcia. This is another guy who broke into the house. Not too bright. No, not too bright. That's September twenty third of seventy three. <clears throat> Don't know how long after that that they. We'd have to look that up to see, but how long after until they were killed? But there's some pictures, guys, that uh, never uh, never shown before, and uh, you never uh, never see. Frank Collada, when he was younger, that was him at 30 years old. Uh, his partner, Leo Gardino, part of the Hole in the Wall gang. Uh, that's in Glenville, uh, Glenview, Illinois, police. Harry Ailman uh, in 72. That's Joe DeFranzo, John DeFranzo's brother in 68. John Mandel, Pete Basil, Steve Garcia, Willie Butchie Petroselli. And uh, guys, only here at Mob Vlog do you get this kind of, you know what I mean? 
this kind of information. We try to, we try to, uh, we try to, we're trying to record and, and history and, and, and document it and preserve it and all of that. And uh, accurately, accurately, accurately. Yes, we don't want we don't want fluff out there, and that's There's why so much bullshit going around about different this and different that. And I knew this, or I heard this, or I heard right. that. Quite right. recently, there was a guy on, um, and he was on a YouTube show. And as I was going over it, he talked. I, I looked at him. I, I took issue with him because I right. was making comments. And he, t I listened to the whole interview, and he talks about the uh, precincts, the Chicago precincts, uh, for the police stations. Right. And I made a comment on that and said we didn't have Chicago precincts. We had Chicago districts. Precincts were in New York. Right. Where they had precincts. Well, this guy gets into it. I don't know what I'm talking about. He also made a mention about um, uh, Tony was a dead man because uh, uh, he said, uh, what you call it, could have never saved his life, um, uh, Joey Lombardo. And I said, if Joey Lombardo were alive, there would have been a big war. I mean, he would have saved his life. And he said, no way. You don't know what you're talking about. That was the... That was the hands down. I said, after that, I just said, the heck with it. So what I did was uh, I made a comment and I asked him, how, how many times have you met Joey? When's the last time you saw him? Oh, I saw him at Sam Family Secrets. Occasionally, I saw him ride around on a bicycle. My stories came from people in the neighborhood. And I said, so you're basically what you're telling me is that you have secondhand stories. <laughs> And that's what you're you're going on a show and talking about. And he said, "Well, I was a court buff too. I used to watch all the <laughs> the court trials and everything else." But he considers himself an expert. BSJ, wrong place, wrong time. Those guys like him oh, yeah. at his last wedding. Yeah, LOL. I hear you, BSJ. I've, I've been married twice now, both times unsuccessfully. First, Here we got somebody from Romania. Oh, that's 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 uh, that's uh, uh, Decibalis Rex. How you doing, Decibalis Rex? So I, I've been unfortunate twice now. I've been married twice, both times. It's unsuccessful. My first wife, she left me. This one, this one won't. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what Decibalis means. Oh, uh, Allie's gonna kill Rex me. Oh, God. King. So Decibalis means what? I don't know. Decibolics Rex. I, I don't know. But uh, Kehlani uh, Di Bernardo, 11 total got killed from that Accardo robbery, Red? Yes. Yes. I, I don't remember the story exactly. That's why I'm just, you, it was 11 total. They so went around and cleaned up that four, whole crew. Four, four, I said four that were and killed. And some of them were innocent. They got, yeah, they I would got say only four of them did the burglary, right? Right. But they killed 11 people because, oh, well, you might they were have. They all done. part of the same crew. Damn, that's crazy. Unbelievable. Um, uh, I miss my ex-wife. Maybe my aim will improve. <laughs> William Kirchman, you're, you're funny, man. I I like that. He's got a good sense of humor. I love your sense of humor. <laughs> uh, I have read all of Romer's books a long time ago. Uh, I see that the guy went to Chicago court. I wondered, always wondered why. Hey, Brett. So in researching for the new tour out here in Vegas, if you guys haven't heard, we do have a tour out here, the Vegas Mob Tour. Everybody who takes it thinks that it's really good. They do. You guys ought to take this tour. It was fantastic. I recommend it 100%. I love the Frank videos. Those were great. Personal stories. Yeah, I mean, personal you stories. very close with Frank Colotta and you get, you get the vibes. You got to do this. Oh, hell, the best part of my trip out here it's uh, everything about casino that you wanted to see and it's cool to see see it all this was like fucking authentic it was amazing awesome awesome oh unbelievable adam is just first class great information great tour fascinating 10 out of 10. To take the tour you'll have a great time you're gonna learn a lot you're gonna have a awesome. fun time too absolutely great it was awesome. I would definitely recommend it. It was good to learn about the history. It was awesome, man. I enjoyed it. Fantastic. I, I loved it. What'd you think, Mo? It was great. Yeah. It was a lot of fun. It was great, great. Very informative. You come to Vegas, make sure you do this tour. 
It was great. It was awesome. It really Highly was. recommend. Amazing. Amazing. <laughs> I do it. That last shot, I looked like a giant. It was like a whole family of short people that were on the tour. They fit comfortably in the vehicle. If they were all my size, not so much. But that's any vehicle, you know what I mean, Red? It's a comfortable vehicle we take out. So, Bobby Bag of Donuts. That was Bobby Bag of Donuts in the beginning. He came on the tour. Red, did you know the other Spilatro brothers? The cousins of Anthony and Michael? They lived in Huron and Noble, Anacon. And Kana Street, John, Michael, Joe, and Nick. And no, the only one I knew was Vic, Vic Spilacho. <laughs> Adam is Gulliver, Gulliver's stunt double. No kidding, huh? Hey, ma hey, Tom Coase, you got to, no offense, get some models for the ad. Listen, I paid those people a lot of money to do those testimonies. <laughs> hey, these are real people, Tom. Lay off, man. Be nice. You know what I mean? Seriously. That's what we, we aren't like that over here on this channel. I'll put you in time out. Don't play with me. <laughs> 0969. This is paid advertisement is brought to you by you're damn right. Yeah, they're vertically challenged. I I got he finally answered it. Who? Who answered it? Uh, Debili I can't pronounce it. Rex. Oh, Decibolus Decibolics Rex. Was the king of Deca, Romania, 2,000 years ago. So that's he, how he got his names. From oh, Rangers. Decibolics Rex was king of Dacia, Romania, 2,000 right. years ago. Sure. Or Dacia, I don't know. All right, so what's the thing with this John Wayne Gacy? Let's let's talk about this. Number, number oh, this one. winner. Let's let's get into this for a few minutes. So, and then we got an after party. We're going to talk about the offer, the the ninth episode, which was fantastic. Uh, we're going to talk about that in a little bit on Red's channel. If you guys want to join us over there, that's great. Uh, please do. There's a link. I didn't do a Monday show this week. <laughs> Adam, if I looked like you, I'd walk everywhere backwards. I, you know what, ex cop. A few nights ago, I walked backwards into your mom's house. I walk everywhere backwards too. And then I walked backwards out her back door. How you like that, ex cop? Mm. <laughs> so, I'm telling you, man, these people, unbelievable. Be nice for crying out loud. Ah, oh, what the hell? Nothing beats real testimonials. Okay, I'd like to see a few strippers too, LOL, right? No, strippers in the commercial would be good. That's what I should do. I should go down to Sapphire's Gentleman's Club and I should offer free mob tour to any strippers. And then I get testimonials afterwards. That way we have some, some good looking people, you know. Oh, uh, you got Misty. Well, yeah, see, I got Misty in the commercial. So, you know, come on, guys, you know. Damn, shots fired. Yes, indeed. Don't play around. I'm serious. I used to be a street performer. You don't want to mess with me. I'm, I'm telling you. Exactly, Frank. You know exactly what I'm getting at. All right. So, John Wayne Gacy. Um, John Wayne Gacy. So, you guys all know the story. And those of you from Chicago, obviously, uh, you know, no, killer clown, killer yeah, clown. Yeah, yeah. Pogo, Pogo the clown, right? Who, who had a pretty rough childhood, and uh, liked to do magic tricks. And uh, I thought after I watched the Netflix series on him and everything I saw during the years in 1978 and and before, everything I saw was on the local news in Chicago. So I thought I knew everything there was to know until I talked to Adam. Adam popped up with something that's very unique. Um, um, uh, so Tom Coe's apologized. It's all good, Tom. Everybody forgives you. He's a little, he's a little bud drunk. He's been drinking this afternoon in Illinois. Actually, well, yeah, it's still afternoon over there. A little early for the drinky drinks, don't you think? Yeah. <laughs> Here goes Anthony, Anthony D. Martini. I got strippers on my channel, Turpentine Mineral Spirits. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Nothing so like keeping it clean, buddy. 
Adam's a street performer. Who who else pictures as a showgirl walking the strip? Pictures anyone? Adam's true. Who else pictures a showgirl walking up and down? Oh, you mean you're picturing me dressed as a showgirl walking the strip, taking pictures with people? Robert. That would be interesting. I only did that after 11 p.m. Everything before that, I did magic. So, <laughs> oh, Tom Coase, he's bud drunk. He's smoking. He's, he's bud drunk, stoned. I get it. I'm sorry. I didn't think you were drinking. He's smoking. So. <sighs> Red, what do we have watching the channel, man? <laughs> Bunch of Julianne, Julianne comes up with exactly what I came up with. Unbelievable. Okay, so look, Wayne Gacy, John Wayne Gacy. Let's talk about Pogo the Clown. That's what she says. She says he was in prison in, here in Iowa before he went to Chicago. Yes. Waterloo. Four well, months. You're after. about to be corrected, Julianne. All right. So it's not after four months after he, he sodomized a young boy. Uh, it, it was after he was sentenced to 10 years. And he served 18 months. He got out in, he was uh, convicted in 1968. No, yeah, 1968. He was supposed to spend 10 years. That would have kept him in prison until 78. Follow the timeline? He got out earlier. He got out in 18 months. He got out in 1970. Now, his first wife, which he had two children with, she left him after he was convicted of sodomy. In 1968. So in Iowa, in Iowa, Waterloo, Iowa, we'll right. be specific. Now he got out and he went to Chicago and he got remarried. I think Marlon was his first wife. And then the second wife, I can't remember Christine, uh, Karen, something like that. So, so he got out and he, Let's backtrack to when he was 20 years old. Well, well, yeah, let's get to that in a second, though. We want to get to that in a second, okay? We'll go back to the beginning once we get to the end. So he got out, and then he killed a couple of of guys. While he was married and had the kids in the house, he he killed a couple of guys, and he buried in the crawl space. Well, the first one he buried in the crawl space under the house. No. The first one was buried in the cement in the garage. No, that was number two. I think that was number two. Number one went in the crawl space. Number two went in the cement out back. And then the third one, I don't know where that went. Probably in the crawl space. Then he got divorced from the wife. That was between the years of like 72 and 76. As soon as he got divorced from his wife, and he told her when he got married to her, he said, I'm bisexual. He wanted to be open to her about it. She, She leaves him four years later. And then between 76 and 78, he murders 30, 30, 30 kids. 31. 31 more. I don't know what the total was, 33 or 34, but. 31 below. Oh, outfit boss. They dug up his driveway a few years back and found another body. I didn't know that. Thank you for the update. So we went there when we were in Chicago. Art Kelly and I went to Gacy's house. Well, where it was, because it was, it's all been rebuilt. Demolished. Yeah, it's been rebuilt. Uh, but that's the site. That's where it all was. And I can't believe that they, they didn't, you know, you can't tell me that his wife didn't know what that smell was. See, Don Ciccio di Porzalo. I thought about that when I started to read about, I thought about it and you know, how she, he caught him, she caught him in the garage. He had like wrestling mats and a chamber of horse in the garage. And she caught him a couple of times with dildos and other things. And that's why she divorced him. Well, when they went through the house with the first search warrant, they found a bunch of stuff like that and, and, and police badges. And, you know, he had the spotlights on his car, too. So he was impersonating cops going around and he'd tell these, you know, kids that. And, and so. So, yeah, that's what was happening. And but I thought about it. The first body, if he dug down six feet, I mean, if he dug a hell of a hole down there and put the first kid down and then packed it over, there wouldn't be any smell. There'd be no smell. Right. But that's what gave him away when those kids, when they were looking for the one kid that went missing from the drugstore, which is those last scene with him. And then when they ran all of the John Gacy's in Chicago. And he wasn't even in there. He went to the Splains River. Right. They didn't even, that's right. They didn't find him. He went into the, the Splains River, right. Which, it's just crazy. You know, when he was, when he was executed, people i remember that was in 94 i was in high school and i just remember peace yeah was it william peace 
His last yes. name was there was a Josh Peast. I think it was Josh. No, it was oh, okay. Well, anyway, it was Peast. And uh, he used lime to cover the odor. Well, that's what gave him away. Well, when the cops, and I guess, you know, here's the thing. He invited the cops in the second time. And that's when they found the ticket in the garbage can. And they found the, uh, they went in the bathroom and the heater kicked on. And when the heat kicked on, out came the smell. And I'll tell you, if you know what decomposing flesh smells like, you know that smell. There's nothing in the world that smells like it. A dead animal doesn't smell like a decomposing corpse. It doesn't. Break out the vest. Break out the vest. <laughs> right. Right. Put the cigarette butts up your nose, whatever it takes. It, it, you're right. Yeah. So Robert Peace, thank you, uh, Anthony. He thought he was smarter than the cops. Yeah, he, he, he did. He did. In all the interviews, they said he was so egomaniac, right? It's crazy egotistical. All right. Very so. narcissistic. You're going to hear it here first, folks. You're going to hear it here first. So we are getting ready to launch a brand new tour. And on that tour, we are going to go past a mortuary here in town. In 1962, sorry, 1968. Sorry. No, before 60, then. 60, 60. In 1960, when John Wayne Gacy was 20 years old, his father, who'd been beating him, gave him a car and made him make payments to him for the car. And when he didn't do what, what John didn't do what his father asked, his dad would take the keys from him. So John went out and got a second set of keys made for the car. It pissed his dad off and his dad took the distributor cap off the car, which upset John and sent him into such a tirade that as soon as he got that distributor cap back a few days later, he got in his car and he drove out here to Vegas to his cousin's house, stayed with his cousins. He got a job as an ambulance driver. When they found out he wasn't 21, they put him up as a assistant director over at the Palm Mortuary here in town. He lived in a room behind the embalming room. For three months, he worked there and he uh, 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 watched the embalmers work on the corpses. And then one day, a 15-year-old boy was rolled into the morgue about 12 weeks into his being in town. And he admitted to taking the clothes off and getting and caressing the and getting into the coffin. Okay. With the, and going into a state of shock, getting out in the next morning, calling his mother and telling his mother that he wanted to come home and asked if dad would let him come back home. When she said that dad said, yes, you can come home, he got in his car and he drove back to Chicago. And that began his fascination with the dead. Now, is that and not boys, And boys. Yeah. Yeah. And boys, you know. So, so from there, he went to Waterloo, Iowa. Well, yeah. Water, well, then from Chicago to Waterloo, Iowa, and then back to Chicago. He where started all in Vegas. He had his, uh, right, where he had his, his, uh, unauthorized graveyard beneath his house so anyway it's been fun red i enjoyed your uh, afternoon with me uh, uh, thank you again for coming on thank you all for coming to the show you're welcome you're welcome i appreciate it and, and thank all of you thank all of you for stopping by it's yeah good thank to you see all. all well we're gonna be at the after party you guys can come over and check us out at the after party we'll see you there and be sure to go to mobmento.com where you can buy The Last Vegas Mobster on USB. My name is Frank Collada. I am the last living gangster in Las Vegas. 360000 dollars armed robbery that I committed and got away with. So I put six bullets in his head, and he ran. I looked at the gun like, did I miss this guy? I knew it was pressed against his head. He was a scared. I don't blame him.